Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. OP, you did right by finding a new training vendor for your new employer, no doubt saving them money. Rest assured that your old CEO will learn of their loss of business at your hands. Never treat your staff like crap on the way out if you don't know where they're going. I recently resigned from my job. I was just tired and burnt out, and my CEO kept pushing me hard, telling me to drive further, and that's just how it was. I was also moving house and commuting to work would be another 30 minutes on top of one and a half hours I'm already doing, so enough was enough. I got so tired that I resigned. I hadn't got another job lined up, that's fine, I was okay financially. As soon as I resigned, my CEO called me into the office 20 minutes later and asked me to leave straight away, escorted me off-site like a criminal, and wouldn't even let me say bye to people, touch my laptop, clear my desk. It was like I was being fired, it was so embarrassing. No one from work got in touch to see if I was okay as he went around telling everyone he fired me and saying it went pear-shaped with her at the end, so I had to let her go. Fast forward a few weeks. Well, I did find another job with one of my ex-employer's clients that used their services to do their emergency training for them, first aid and fire training, and now I'm in charge of who we use as our contractors. My new boss said, well, we normally use your old company at a cost of $37,000 a year, but if you know another company that's better, then switch. I have no loyalty to them. Well, switch I have done. <laughs> My old boss hadn't treated me so badly, I definitely would have used their services. But treat me like that and say goodbye to a client. And our second story. Mom ruins vacation by having tantrum. My husband and I have saved up to rent a beach house right on a private beach in Florida. It's the second time we've rented this exact location. The house alone costs approximately $3,000 for the week. We also had to pay round-trip flight, food, drinks, entertainment, etc. We planned on paying for my husband, our son, our daughter, and myself. We did invite other friends and family to come if they wanted, but they were supposed to get there on their own, pay for anything but the house, with the understanding of they might not get a room and might get a couch or random sleeping setup. The whole point of this vacation was to relax. My husband and I rented a car but didn't plan on doing a lot of driving. We did plan on going grocery shopping on the first day and load up the house so we had food and drinks for the week. We also picked up boogie boards because, come on, Florida Beach. We find out who all wants to join us on our vacation and it's interesting. Someone we were stationed with in the military about 10 years ago who now lives in Florida brought her family and that was super cool. And my in-laws live in Florida so a bunch of them were coming which was great too. My mom, EM, and stepdad, SD, really wanted to come, and I thought it'd be okay, and they were able to get a flight, so that was happening. My husband and I made it known that we didn't want to make a bunch of plans, we wanted to relax, we didn't want to be out and about every day, all day. After all, we paid 3 k for a private beach house. This is where the story starts to go wrong. Husband and I kept having to make little runs to town for small things. We were both getting tired of it and decided we were going to try and go nowhere for the next two days at least, but that didn't work. See, EM and SD didn't rent a car and were not on our rental agreement, so they couldn't take the car. We'd just gotten back from the trip where we said we wanted to stop going out when SD came out of the house as I was walking up the stairs. SD asked if there was any way I would mind taking him into town for snorkel gear. He looked so excited. I looked at MH and he shrugged. I said, okay, but let's make sure no one else needs anything because after this, I'm not going anywhere for a couple of days. He said, great, and even asked if I was sure and okay with taking him. I said, yes, as long as I can stay home after this for a while. We checked in with everyone we could find. This was everyone but EM. No one needed anything. I did ask where EM was. She was out walking the beach. Here's the thing about EM, when she's on the beach, you won't see her for hours as she goes and walks, talks, picks shells, and who knows what else. The point I'm making is EM was not there, and I was not going to go attempt to find her. I did look to see if she happened to be on the beach in front of the house. She was not. SD and I ran to town. We went to a really cool surf shop and got snorkel stuff and new beach towels. Then SD knew EM was wanting a few things. It was stuff to make crafts with. I told him we can stop at two stores that I know where they were, and if they couldn't find stuff, EM was out of luck for now. We stopped, and I ran in and bought the stuff EM was wanting. I figured since we couldn't find her before leaving, this should make her happy. Boy, was I wrong. 
When we got back to the beach house, EM was throwing a toddler-sized fit, crying and acting up, even throwing her arms in the air. EM claimed she was hurt that we even asked everyone else, but not her. I explained we looked for her in front of the house, but because of how she walks on the beach, we weren't going to wait. I did tell her SD and I did stop and get her craft stuff. She kept having a fit, making really uncomfortable, but I walked away and got ready to go to the beach, and even though EM was stressing me out with her behavior, I was trying to relax and not let it get to me. Her behavior continued all day long. EM was making snide, backhanded comments all day. Husband and I were trying to ignore it was getting really annoying. We went along with our day and she was ruining the day for everyone. The next morning, she was still acting the same way, so husband and I talked and we decided we were going to offer to take her into town one time to one dang store. EM likes to go wherever she wants and ignores all others. I ran down to the beach, caught EM before she got too far away. Me. EM, my husband and I want to know if you want to go into town. We're going to stop for breakfast and then we're only going to one store we want to get back and relax. We're only going because we know you really wanted to go, so... EM, you really hurt my feelings. Me. Okay, well, are you coming? EM, yes, let me go change. Me. No problem. EM went up to the house, but didn't change, but we got in the car. Me. I thought you were going to change. EM, you're in too much of a hurry. Me. I could have changed. In my head, I'm thinking, whatever. We stop for breakfast, and we sit at a four-top. Husband and I sit next to each other, and EM sits across from me. We order, get our drinks, and our food comes. Husband and I start to eat, and EM announces loud enough for the entire restaurant to hear her say, It's okay, I covered you in prayer. And all I say is, I already prayed, I just did it silently. Husband and I just looked at each other. After we paid for breakfast, we went down the road to the store. We were walking around, not rushing EM at all. We get to the checkout, and EM says, I forgot I need postcards. I said, go grab them. EM says, okay. I said, we'll meet you in the car, no rush. Not 10 minutes later, EM's at the car. I was shocked. Me, did you get your cards? EM, no, I went to the area, and a gentleman told me they were in the back of the store. I told them my daughter and son-in-law are in a hurry, and I can't go back there. By the way, he told me to tell you you need to relax. Me. You could have gotten them. I told you, no rush. The vacation continued with more of the same. Also, once we got home, she told me I drank too much. I told her I didn't drink nearly enough having her on vacation, and I let her know I didn't even drink enough to get buzzed because I was dealing with her. And our next story. Ruined my crap boss's marriage. About 10 years ago, when I was 19, I worked for a regional grocery store in the meatpacking department. Pay was bad and I had second shift. I came in at 3 and left at 11. It wasn't a terrible job, all things considered. I had the meat room to myself so I could just listen to music and really just not be annoyed by other employees. My duties when I showed up was to package more ground beef and other beef-based products and put them on the shelf. After 5, I also had to juggle working behind the deli counter. Well, shortly after getting hired, the boss of the meat department showed back up from vacation and I was the new guy. Everything was fine at the beginning, but I found when I would clock in the lady behind the counter, we'll call her V, wouldn't be there, and there would be a line, so I would clock in, spend the first 30 minutes of my shift doing her job. No problem, I actually like that position. Well, after the line was done, I would almost always see Mr. Boss staring me down angry and not doing my job. He would give me the rant about doing my duties unless customers needed my help, and they almost always did, but he wouldn't listen. Come to find out, the reason V isn't behind the counter is because her and Mr. Boss are having meetings in his office with the door closed. Not my husband or wife, not my problem. We continue this dance of me covering her station and getting in trouble for it for a few weeks until an ice storm hits. I tell my boss I can't get my car out and I'm waiting on a ride so I might be a little late. He proceeded to fire me because this is the last straw. By the way, I hadn't had any write-ups. I agree that it's fine because I hate this job anyway. Fast forward two years. I'm 21 and I'm celebrating with my friends at basically the only local bar in this terrible, tiny, crap hole town. And when we walk in, who do I see? Why, if it isn't Mr. Boss and not V, but his wife. He looks at me and tries to act like it's a happy coincidence. I sit down, tell him it's my 21st. He buys me a beer as a gift and I chat him up. 
Enter my revenge. I introduce myself to his wife and tell her how he treated me, talking about how I would cover the deli counter almost every shift for a half hour, then get in trouble for it because it wasn't my job. No matter how many times I tried telling the boss I wouldn't have to cover deli if he and V weren't having their daily locked door meeting in his office, she looked at him, looked at me, and couldn't say a word. It could be read as crappy, but his wife was super polite and friendly and not that crappy southern religious style, but a genuinely nice person. I'm glad I could help to pull the wool to let her know her husband is a complete garbage person. And our last story. Karen built a building on my land while I was on a cruise. Picture this. A quaint little country house nestled in the serene countryside. Life was pretty darn sweet until I met my neighbor from hell. Let's call her Karen, because that name just fits the bill. So living next door to me was this adorable old lady named Nancy. She was like a ray of sunshine, always baking cookies and offering warm smiles. Our yards were connected and we didn't bother with a fence because, hey, we were friendly folks. Nancy became a regular guest at our picnics and dinners. Then, out of the blue, Nancy had a heart attack. We called an ambulance and reached out to her daughter, Karen. We did everything we could, but sadly, Nancy passed away in the hospital just a day later. It hit us hard, you know? Nancy was a part of the family. Fast forward a few weeks, and guess what? Karen inherited Nancy's house. Turns out Karen wasn't cut from the same cloth as her sweet mama. No siree. She turned into the neighbor from the dark depths of hell. Our once friendly chats turned into awkward glares and uncomfortable silence. Karen was always drinking and bringing strange men over, playing music loudly in the middle of the night and letting her dog crap in our yard, then pretending that it wasn't her dog who did it. Sometimes I think Karen did it herself. But wait, it gets better. One day we decided to go on a cruise because my wife and I could take a vacation at the same time this time. We set sail thinking we'd leave our troubles behind. Boy, were we wrong. When we got back, imagine our surprise when we saw a big new barn standing on our land. I mean, seriously, did Karen think she could just claim my property as her own? It's not smearing crap on my driveway, not on my watch. But even now, I've decided, first, decided let's settle this peacefully. I offered to buy back the land she'd snatched away, but no, Karen wasn't having any of it. She spouted some nonsense about it being her territory and threatened to bring in a surveyor to prove her point. That's when I said, all right, Karen, game on. So first what happened was what we expected. The surveyor confirmed that it was my land and Karen herself paid for it, lol. Then we went to court. My wife's brother is a lawyer, so I was sure I would win. And even if my lawyer had been the Karen's dog, I would have been sure of my victory too. And of course the judge ruled in my favor. I not only got to keep my shed, oh yeah, it was awarded to me, but I also walked away with a hefty sum of cash to build a fence. Karen had to sell her house and move to pay off her debt. Well, forgive me, the people, she's become a new neighbor. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.